I was upset that you didn't get an <laughs> ear infection in the other ear, too. Because you only got an ear infection in one ear. No, both ears. It was both ears? Both ears. Okay, good, then you got it. Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. Yes, yeah, Sarah Connor. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the T-1000. <laughs> Who is he in this movie? T-800. Okay. T yeah. That's me. That is, uh, that's, um, the dude from Cyberdyne, the guy who runs Cyberdyne. Robert uh, Patrick. No, 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 uh, what's his name? Oh, yes, Dyson. Miles Dyson. Miles Dyson. Oh, that was definitely Sarah Connor. Oh, that's uh, Sarah in T2. She's got the needle in homie's neck. That's the awesome. kid from Jerry Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Connor. <laughs> that's Sarah. Sarah. John Connor said it. It was John. We are failing miserably. We are like. It's either Connor. Kyle yeah. or Sarah. <laughs> it's good there's only three really to choose. <laughs> like, yeah, Sarah. Uh, T-1000. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't me. No, that's that's Kyle Reese, is it? Good <sighs> Kyle Reese. That damn Kyle Reese. Yeah, he, yeah. Knows, he knows the movie. Oh, yeah. I know. You know how many years ago that was, by the way? 35. The funniest thing is always when you screw up. Right, because that's what makes everyone laugh. So you try to be really ballsy and you look serious and you take the weapons and you try to load the weapon and you know you've practiced it now to put that magazine in and to cock it and to get ready for the shot. Of course, every, when, you, when you shoot for some reason, or other, your adrenaline goes up a little bit and then the, the timing is off. So you grab the same magazine and you totally miss it and the close up and then you have to just cut the whole thing and you just and then everyone laughs, you know, everyone stands around there, ha ah, ha ha ha, the terminator screwed up and stuff like that. So those are funny moments. It's not so funny to her because she's a much more serious person than I am. But to I me it's, it's very funny. Deadly serious. Yeah, it. <laughs> there was the day where I was running to chase you guys and then Sarah gets out of the car and she starts unloading this 30 round shotgun on you. And in rehearsal it always worked, but it became this like like complete <laughs> it's like you're watching a farce or something at the theater because the moment we say action, I start running. Oh, the gun jams. And they're okay, back to one. All right, cool. And then she's like, pop, 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 pop. Okay. And then they go, and then we, as soon as, the, as, soon as they call action, I start running. The gun jams. And they're just like, holy <laughs> moly, this is just, this is, com this is comedy. This is complete comedy. You asked me about the hard moments where you show up with ear infections. You've been in the tank um, in the water for weeks. You get ear infections and then you go in and they hang you upside down. And so every time you reach 90 degrees, you're nauseated with the ear infections and wondering what you should eat that morning because you're going to throw it up on Mackenzie in the back seat because it was just day after day of just nausea and ear infections. To me, this it's is funny, funny now. But it serves you right. <laughs> it serves me right. Yeah, I, was, I was upset that you didn't get an <laughs> ear infection in the other ear, too. Because you only got an ear infection in one ear. No, both ears. It was both ears? Both ears. Okay, good, then you got it. We that had a producer thing. whose job was literally just like, do you need a doctor? Where do you want me to take you? Do you need an eye doctor, an ear doctor? <laughs> We were all on wires, we were and then we built a full 360 degree gimbal. So it's the fuselage of the C5. I think it's the first one of its kind. It's massive. It's on the biggest stage they had in Budapest and it rotates full 360. So we could walk around it while it, it was, was going. for your brain. Like the Jamiroquai like, video, I but just huge. Yes. understand, I was like, what is going on? I mean, I was kind of like, yeah, it was The best crazy. part was we were all sitting down like kids, you know, we were all sitting there, all right, we're going to test it. Arnold's here, and then Mackenzie and Ty were all like, we're sitting down. And the thing starts going, all right, take it to 90. And it goes, and there we are. We're just walking, then we sit down, and it's turning. And Arnold just turns to us and goes, oh, this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> and it felt like we were about to get in like a roller coaster or whatever, some kind of amusement park ride. 
and they took us all the way around. It's so hard to understand at what point in the story and where on the plane are you and because it's there's so many effects and little bits and big bits. We had to refer, I did constantly, had to refer to the computerized version so that we would know what's happening here because it was the first script I've ever read that I could not fully comprehend. Like, as I'm reading it um, the first time, I'm like, but, uh, huh? And I, a friend of mine came in as I was finishing and I was like, we have to get my affairs in order because I will not be coming back from this. It was just so unimaginable <laughs> and I was white. It says a lot. I was naked. Well, no, you have like patches and stuff, but it's nothing that makes you feel like you're that not you're naked. naked. In a way, yeah, it's like naked. like trussing a turkey. Like it's yeah. not the nicest feeling. <laughs> was supposed to do my arrival scene, the nude scene, really early on in shooting. And to do it, you have to do, I was always on a diet. This, where I ate a lot of food, but I was not food I wanted for the whole movie, but then for the like, two weeks before you shoot the arrival scene, they like really, you cut out absolutely everything, just fall deep into a depression and have a miserable existence. But we, they kept moving the arrival scene, so I did that two weeks like starvation period, like three or four times over oh, the course of the movie. And I think we shot the arrival two weeks before we finished the movie. And by that time I was so tired of not eating that I was just like, I couldn't have been more comfortable being naked. It was the best day of my life. Everybody had bought food for me. I had just like <laughs> cornucopia of pizza Cakes and, and pizza. Swedish candy in my room. Yeah, yeah, I was I was over the moon and extremely comfortable. For me, Arnold is number one. I would have said the same thing about you. <laughs> you're number one. Enjoyed the hell out of the weapons again, and um, the fact that I'm 62 and I'm back. You know that Jim Cameron is involved and that Linda is involved. Uh, that we kind of, the old team came together. So that's number one. Number two, the story line. And number three, working uh, uh, with uh, such an incredible cast. Just learning, I think, this is the main thing for me on this movie. You know, I've been acting for a while, but I, I never expected to, you know, like, be a part of this huge franchise and movie and an action movie so it was tons of learning so for me it was like a whole new world and just like learning a lot. You know taking a lot of the skills that I've acquired over time with you know the wires and the combat and the, the, the weapons training all that and then battling Sarah Connor T-800 that's that's something. There are many many reasons but I have to say that in my my own life post film I frequently thank Terminator for letting me walk into a gym and understand what to do. It's such a nice <laughs> feeling to be like I'm not scared shame. of this I know what to do. The women set the whole new standard when it comes to you know, being ballsy and the kicking ass and all of that stuff and made it totally believable. It's not like, oh, what is the message here? Are we trying to promote kind of women equality or something? No, this is the real deal here. I mean, it's like amazing the kind of stuff that women poured off in this movie. I do think this is just a reflection of how the world has changed, but it actually needs a lot of change. You know, I think it's not only having women because, you know, this is just what happened to be this movie, uh, but also having a Latina here behind the cameras. We had like 600 people, and how many of them were women? Yeah, it was you know, just like a sea of men. All the it time. was yeah, and so men that we loved, but it, yeah, yeah, we loved know. them, but it was like full of men. You know, in front of the camera, we have three female characters that are really different from one each, from each other. So you know, I'm proud and I'm lucky that I got to these amazing women that we actually loved each other and we got along really well. But it's a long way to go.